Comcast shares rising Thursday morning after the company released a beat on the top and bottom lines during its second quarter. Welcome to Variety's second quarter media earnings coverage. I'm Heidi Chung, media analyst and correspondent for Variety Intelligence Platform. Comcast reporting adjusted earnings per share of 83 cents on revenue of $28.55 billion during Q2. Its core businesses continued their momentum, and its media business, NBC Universal, showed signs of a meaningful recovery. Variety co editor in chief Cynthia Littleton is here to break it all down. Let's talk about streaming, Peacock, NBC Universal. It was a pretty good quarter overall for NBC Universal when we're thinking about theme parks. Um, Peacock again reporting signups, 54 million. No idea how much right. of that is, is paid. Um, so I want to get your thoughts on that 54 million number, but also the fact that they reported their number as of this week. So that includes all the Tokyo Olympics numbers as well. So what do you make of that number? Mm -hmm. I think that I think signups, I think we may be getting to the end of this, the significance of signups. Every time I report that, I get emails from other executives going, what does that mean? Um, I think, you know, the metrics for the, the metrics in the streaming wars are all a little bespoke. Everybody kind of has their, their, their favored measurement stick, but I think, I think signups is a level of circulation. The, the more telling number was that they also said that, that in, the, in this past quarter, they were averaging about 20 million monthly active users a month. Can I push back on that? Because last quarter in Q2, they reported 14 mm -hmm. million. So mm -hmm. only 6 million added over the past quarter. Is that something to be concerned about? Should investors say, well, I guess no one's really sticking around after signing up? Right. It's not Disney Plus in its right. first quarters, that's for sure. Um, I think Peacock is, is really still a work in progress. I think even with the Olympics boost, the Olympics this year have a little bit of a cloud around them. There's not as much, there's just not as much sizzle around the Tokyo Olympics for so many, for so many obvious reasons for the world, for athletes. Um, so where, and if we recall last year, Comcast's plan was to, or NBC Universal's plan was to launch Peacock on the back of what, what, you know, in a, in a pre-COVID world was going to be a much more celebratory and much more, you know, just a lot more excitement around the Olympics than we have this time. So they, mm -hmm. they've had a couple of tough blows there. Companies like AT&T who have these media businesses, they need to pay to play, right? You, they have to invest in content in order mm -hmm. to be competitive. That being said, NBC Universal, they do have a theme park business. As we know, theme parks mm -hmm. are huge drivers of free cash flow. Mm -hmm. And we saw a meaningful rebound for NBC Universal. Now, that's good news now. But do you think that the demand is there for us to really come back to these pre-COVID levels, profitability, um, to be able to sustain profitability, I should say, for theme parks at NBC. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it was interesting, you know, theme parks, um, from the very beginning of NBC, uh, excuse me, from the beginning of Comcast buying into NBC Universal in 2011, one thing that the executives have always said is that they intended to sell off the theme park business. They certainly did not buy NBCU for the theme parks, but once they got in, they realized it was a big cash generating business, and that's never a bad thing in a diversified mm -hmm. conglomerate. And it was also, they just realized that it was a good, in success, it was a good business. It, it, there's a lot of natural showcases for other things within, within NBC Universal, and it just gives them, it gives them a footprint in other markets. And in, in other territories that I think that, that they see as beneficial for a company that is still primarily domestic. They're making strides, but they're primarily a domestic company, and that's a problem in this, in this world. And so I think that they, uh, Jeff Shell, the CEO of NBC Universal, talked a lot about pent-up demand, and they're seeing they, you know, the theme parks are back to profitability, which was pretty quick. Uh, Orlando is apparently going gangbusters. Um, Universal Studios Hollywood has only been reopened for a short time at a larger capacity than, mm -hmm. you know, at the kind of meaningful capacity. So I think for sure in this next probably 12, 18 months, we are going to see pent up demand, people that have saved money and canceled that trip in 2020 and maybe even canceled the 20, summer 2021 trip, but will want to take the kids to a theme park or to a fun, a fun sort of live event adventure. adventure. Um, so I, like just like with broadband i think it will continue whether it's as robust as we've seen this recovery and so many people just dying to get out of the house that will you know it, it's hard to imagine it being quite that robust but they clearly see they're investing very big in in theme parks in innovation r d 
building another park in Beijing that is going to open in a couple of months. They're, it very much feels like they are in it. Okay, so another hot topic in the space, of course, media m and I mean, we heard from at and it's going to be spinning off Warner Media, merging with Discovery. Mm -hmm. um, so that's going to be a really good thing for at and investors who are hoping that at and is able to pay down its massive debt load. Mm -hmm. Now, Comcast did get a question about m and and the potential for that. What were your thoughts on Roberts' comments and Jeff Shell's comments as well. Brian Roberts said, "We have all the parts," which <laughs> was it was you know it was a very it was a very succinct way yeah. to say. Uh, having covered a lot of Comcast calls, I, I translated, and it means it means that Brian Roberts, I think, especially with their Sky acquisition from a couple of years ago, because that really does that that gives them that went that took them from zero to sixty. That gives mm -hmm. them a big footprint in a subscription business that they understand. Um, they. Um, I think that they feel like there's, there's nothing they have to go get. Mm -hmm. They do have, there's no question, within NBC Universal, there's a lot of capacity and infrastructure to create content. That's the name of the game for, for you know, network and, network and distribution companies is content, 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 content. How much great, innovative, distinctive, you know, subscriber luring content can, can you create? So does Comcast need to go buy another studio? Probably not. Would it help the stock? Would it? Would it? You know, generate a lot of coverage and potentially help the sh stock price in the short term. A big M and A deal, probably. Although we've all we, you know we've all seen the, the downside of that when everybody who is is speculating about it suddenly turns mm -hmm. <laughs> turns skeptical when the deal is done. But I think I, I believe Brian Roberts when he says. We don't need to go chase anything, but I'm not entirely sure. They threw a lot of cold water on the idea that there has been a lot of speculation in the press about, you mm. know, would they hook up with uh, Viacom CBS? D did they also try to get in on the Warner Media game? You know, Comcast has potentially been a spoiler, but so I think they are certainly looking and they will look for opportunities, mm -hmm. but are they actively chasing something like they were a couple of years ago with? with 21st Century Fox and Sky. I don't think they're in the hunt that much. This well, Cynthia Littleton, Variety Co-Editor-in-Chief, thank you so much for your insights today. And for more in-depth analysis, head over to variety.com slash VIP.